Barack Obama won the presidency in 2008, in part due to the excitement of young people. At the time, pundits argued that Obama would fundamentally reshape our electorate and warn those who believe in limited government that it may be too late for this younger generation. Seven years later, young people still struggle to find jobs in the Obama economy. College graduates are working at low-wage jobs and are unable to pay back student loan debt. Gallup reports that 29% of young people are living at home with their parents, the highest level in four decades. There is hope. Many young people have soured on Obama, yet remain allergic to the Republican brand. They are hungry for an alternative. The New York Times Magazine called this the libertarian moment, arguing that the age group most responsible for delivering Obama his two terms may well become a political wild card over time, in large part because of its libertarian leanings. We've got to reach those young people who intuitively value liberty and, and intuitively want to be personally responsible to create future libertarian leaders. I'm proud of the progress we've made thanks to our sponsors, and I'm very excited about the next step we're going to be able to take thanks to the very generous support of Bill and Rebecca Dunn. The Dunns have helped Cato for many years to do the things we do, to build this building, to hire more policy staff to make more people aware of what we're doing. The new support for the Dunn Project is making it possible for us to dramatically expand our website, libertarianism.org. The biggest challenge for the next generation is to stay encouraged about the struggle for liberty when everything in our politics is working to discourage them. Libertarianism.org has been a terrific source for learning about the ideas behind the libertarian movement but we can expand it into the premier educational resource to really teach people those principles and their history and why they continue to matter today. The board conference room at Cato is named after the Duns. That's where they met really officially. I think they'd met once or twice somewhere but never talked to each other. And it was on the first floor at Cato where they did uh, get to know each other. And uh, Bill started working his magic on Rebecca who you would think it would have better taste, but she, uh, she fell for him and it looks like the real deal, I'm afraid. He just looked at me and he said, Rebecca, do you think a cowboy like me and a lady like you could ever have any kind of future together? Obviously we did. <laughs> you know, it's, it's wonderful to be able to spend time with someone and if it, actually eventually share your life with someone who has your same core values. Uh, and Bill and I have that blessing in our lives. We have come to view Cato as the scholarly source for individuals interested in pursuing these ideals. We also believe that Cato is one of the most trusted and reliable sources for lawmakers and policy shapers in our country. Around 1970 or thereabouts, uh, Bill and I were both working in Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, back then, before I became a lawyer, I had a money management firm, and Bill was doing uh, operations research, mostly as a government contractor. But he'd also developed this sophisticated model for forecasting uh, commodity profits, uh, uh, prices, and he promised me big profits if I'd uh, invest. So I checked out his system, and to my surprise, it seemed to work. Uh, on the other hand, I couldn't be completely confident in the test results, and frankly, I was wrapped up in all of my own uh, models forecasting stock prices. So, long story short, I declined to give Bill uh, any money. Uh, that means I could have been a principal at Dunn Capital Management, wildly successful, instead of an unsalaried uh, chairman of the board at the, at the Cato Institute. Roughly 25 years later at a Cato event, there was Bill Dunn, who of course reminded me of my youthful folly, and he has taken considerable pleasure over the years uh, to rub salt in that uh, open wound. But there's a more important story. Uh, Bill Dunn, with Rebecca's input and influence, has been quite simply the indispensable man in the pro-liberty movement. Uh, nobody has labored more diligently or loyally to advance the cause of human freedom. He's not only very smart and motivated and reliable and unflappable, but he's also a man of unaffected warmth uh, and good humor. And on a personal level, he's been a really valued uh, friend. There is a book by James Owen 
entitled Cowboy Ethics, about the code of the working cowboy. We both love the book so much that when I surprised him uh, with a 75th birthday party, I gave everyone a copy of that book. I, I just have to say I'm very proud to call him Cowboy. In addition to their financial support, Bill is famous for his sense of humor. He named his charity the Dunn Foundation for Understanding Capitalist Knowledge and Unregulated Markets. Every time Bill writes a check, Bill delights in sharing a private message with grantees about what he thinks of the Internal Revenue Service. The thing about him is that he gets such a joy uh, being an important player in the libertarian movement, and people enjoy being around him. He's just a you know, happy warrior. and. Uh, you know, if we had a dozen Bill Dunn's, uh, we'd win this thing. One day, Bill came home and he said, well, Rebecca, we are in the movie business. <laughs> and he proceeded to tell me that we were going to be backing Atlas Shrug Part Two. I said, well, cowboy, you know we're going to lose money. <laughs> he said, that's not the point. The movie needs to be made. And I wrote in that I wanted you to have a walk-on part. I said, you did what? <laughs> I'm a writer, not, a, not an actress. And he said, Rebecca, I want you to do it. And this is what got me. He said, I want you to do it for your son and your grandchildren. That's why I want you to do it. How can you refuse a gift like that? So I became an actress. <laughs> Dagny, it's wonderful to have you here. Enjoy the evening. No words could adequately capture the vital contribution that Bill and Rebecca have made in promoting a free society. Uh, at the Cato Institute, we will always be grateful for their dedication, their devotion, uh, and their enormous uh, generosity. Cato's message of free markets, limited government, individual liberty, and peace will be reaching more young people than ever before. Thank you to Bill and Rebecca Dunn and all the Cato sponsors and champions who make this work possible.